Well, the bats uh, here at the Bat Zone are bats that have been injured or orphaned. Uh, some of them have actually uh, been people's pets, which is illegal. It's not allowed, we're not allowed to have bats as pets. And uh, most of them, though, have been born in captivity, so they came from zoos uh, like uh, Milwaukee County Zoo and Philadelphia Zoo, Portland Zoo, uh, and other places around the United States. Sometimes they're old, uh, sometimes they're injured, uh, like Camilla here. She's got an injured wing, so she came to live with us. Well, the big bats are fruit eaters, and so uh, we give them a variety of fruit, including, actually, some vegetables. They love corn on the cob, and they do eat some greens, like kale. They love romaine lettuce as well, but we do call them frugivores because they primarily just eat fruit. And we also have some uh, bats that uh, eat insects. So our local bats in the United States are insect eaters, so we feed them mealworms. There's actually a pretty big difference in personality and temperament among the bats. And the big fruit bats like these tend to be a lot more docile and laid back and easygoing. Uh, Camilla's about 15 years old, but she's very um, easygoing about being picked up uh, and even used for educational programs. Some bats, though, on the other hand, could go years until we're able to actually handle them uh, without them being scared of us. White Nose Syndrome is an unfortunate situation that's going on in North America and we think that it's a fungus that was brought here from Europe. And so this fungus lives in the cold regions. It actually lives in caves or mines during the winter. It gets on the bats and unfortunately it keeps waking the bats up. So the bats keep waking up trying to get this fungus off of them when they're trying to hibernate and they end up starving to death. Unfortunately, in four years, it's moved from one county in New York to 13 states and two provinces in Canada and has killed over a million bats. Well, we do a lot of programs. That's primarily what our organization does, is we do educational programs all over the United States. I get a chance to travel all over, and uh, I'll, I'll do programs at museums and zoos and nature centers. But also, we travel throughout Michigan, and we do educational programs at schools, uh, for clubs and scouts and at libraries. But people also come here to Cranbrook Institute of Science. And the bats out here, this building, people get a chance to come and see behind the scenes. So just right now, like you're finding out about the animals here, you can actually visit in person. I am so proud of our organization and our staff and volunteers. We have a great enrichment program. And what is enrichment? It's to make the lives of these animals richer. That's really what it is. We want to give them stimulation. We want them to not be bored. So what we do is, oh, it's a wide variety of things. We give them strange food that they get to check out. We give them strange smells. We might even put in a snake shed. So the shedding from a snake we might put in. Well, snakes are predators of bats, so they get, they get pretty freaked out about it at first. It's not going to hurt them, but they come and check it out. Uh, we've got a lot of different kinds of toys that they have to play with, uh, maybe to get into the, to the food. But basically, we're trying to stimulate their brains and to give them activities while they live their lives here. The caging here is designed specifically for the bats. And one important thing is that they are plastic coated wire. And so it's easy for the bats to hold on to it. Some of them have soft siding, so as the bats fly and land, they don't hurt themselves. But a lot of these bats are injured. And so we need to make sure that the caging allows them to be able to crawl all around the cage and be able to move around. If a bat's injured, we have a great vet. Uh, Dr. Chris Howe is actually on our board, and he's been seeing our bats right from the beginning. Uh, he's got experience working with exotic animals from all over the world, and uh, we basically treat him like a little puppy. As, as uh, when a baby bat is born, 
um, they nurse off of mom. And so one of the first things is uh, they're drinking mom's milk and eventually they start to look around a little bit. They take their head out from underneath the mom's uh, wing and they might take their first venture off of mom. They'll crawl away, they'll, they'll quickly scurry back to mom. Uh, but eventually they start to uh, flap their wings, so they're developing their muscles in their wings. And then they'll take their first flight. They'll also start to eat food that mom does. So not right away, but a little, a little while afterwards. Uh, the fruit bats, uh, the babies will start to maybe lick a little of the juice as mom's eating, but eventually start taking some of the fruit. Now, once the babies can start flying, and then they can start eating their own food, eventually, like in the wild, obviously, they would fly off after they've matured, and they would uh, find a mate, they'd live in a different colony, uh, and then um, possibly uh, migrate and live in a different place. Some bats, though, stay in the same colony for their whole life. 